Hi and welcome to this lecture on DNA and DNA replication. First thing that I would like to talk about is DNA itself. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid and it is housed in the nucleus of a cell and its main component or the main monomer base unit are called nucleotides. Now each nucleotide consists of a 5 carbon sugar that is deoxyribose a phosphate group and one of either four nitrogen bases and those nitrogen bases are adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. This is a picture showing the makeup of one nucleotide which is the base monomer of DNA and RNA for that matter. In this nucleotide we have our phosphate groups which we can see here and it is attached to our base sugar now keep in mind in DNA we would have an H here whereas in RNA we would have an OH now RNA is ribonucleic acid and it is completely different than DNA DNA is the nucleic acid that is housed in the nucleus and stores genetic information. At the side here we have the nitrogen base and keep in mind that this nitrogen base can be either adenine, thymine, guanine, or cytosine. Now these monomers are linked through the phosphate groups by bonds called phosphodiester bonds and each of these monomers are going to form two complementary strands of nucleotides in DNA and you can think of that as it is a spiral ladder for instance if you took a extension ladder and you grabbed it by both ends and then you twisted them in in opposite directions you would basically have the structure of DNA where the sides of the ladder are the phosphate and the sugar and the rungs of the ladder are the nitrogen bases themselves. In the middle these two strands, these two complementary strands are connected by hydrogen bonds. Now DNA houses most genetic material of the cell. In humans we have 46 separate double-stranded DNA molecules. That would be 23 pairs. The question becomes, how do we get so much DNA into the nucleus of cells? There is a lot of DNA in the nucleus of a cell. Well, in order to get it in there, the cell has to do some special stuff with DNA. One of the first things it does is to wind the DNA around nuclear proteins. And these proteins are called histones. When you look at the DNA together with the histones, these are called nucleosomes. Now we can see DNA existing in two forms inside of a cell. The form that most are familiar with are called chromosomes. If you've ever watched any TV shows like CSI, you would see DNA in the form of chromosomes. This is the coiled form and it is used when the DNA is dividing simply because it's easier to handle and move around the cell. However, when it is not dividing and cells are usually not dividing, it is in its loose form called chromatin. In its loose form it allows the cell access, much easier access to the DNA to carry out normal everyday functions of the cell. Here is a picture showing the structure of DNA both in its uncoiled and coiled forms. Let's take its coiled form first. Here is coiled chromatin and we can see as it gets into smaller and smaller structures that we have the DNA itself and that's the blue strand that is wrapped around the histones and that is here. 
and as each will wrap around the histone it will pack it tighter and tighter and tighter and it will allow the cell to have large amounts of DNA contained within the nucleus. Now DNA wrapped around histones we call nucleosomes. If you were to look at just the structure of DNA itself without the histones it would resemble this figure on the right. Now we have the sides of the DNA indicated by the X's and they will be the sugar phosphate backbone. That is the sugar molecule and the phosphate molecule. Now keep in mind that the phosphates are linked together by phosphodiester bonds. In the middle we have the nitrogen bases that's here and here and you can see that we have complementary base pairing that a C will always pair with a G or cytosine always pairs with guanine and adenine will always pair with thymine in DNA. Now please keep in mind that if you are referring to RNA it can be different and it is different. Now let's say that the cell is undergoing DNA replication because it is entering mitosis where the cell will make a new copy of itself so it needs another complete set of DNA to pass on to the new cell. Well it happens in a couple steps. I will break it down in basic steps listed here and then I will show you in the figure itself first step is you have to unwind the DNA molecule and the unwinding is being done by an enzyme called helicase it will zip along the DNA strands and break the hydrogen bonds it is basically like it is unzipping it step three you have to assemble the new DNA strands an enzyme called DNA polymerase will come through read the old strand, the strand that is already there, and then add complementary bases to that old strand. Keep in mind that an adenine will pair with a thymine and a cytosine will pair with a guanine. So for example, if you had this parent sequence, the DNA polymerase would add its complementary strand as this sequence and keep in mind that they are joined by hydrogen bonds. Now once these strands are made a third enzyme DNA ligase will seal something called Okazaki fragments together. I will show you this in the next figure and then you get the restoration of DNA to its original coiled double helix. Now here is a figure showing the basic process of DNA replication. There's a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, that my explanation of this process will just cover the major enzymes to help understand the basic process. Please note that some enzymes have been left out of this explanation. And number two, it is important to understand that DNA has a direction to it and we denote that direction with either its 5 prime or 3 prime ends. So in this figure on the right we have the 3 prime end and on the left we have the 5 prime end and please keep in mind that DNA polymerase will only copy the new strand in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Alright, so let's take a look at the process now that we understand those couple facts. Number one, we have the unwinding of the DNA molecule. And this unwinding, though it is not shown here, is done by DNA helicase as I described 
in the last slide, DNA helicase. And it creates something at 2 that we call the replication fork. Now, once you have the two DNA strands, the original DNA strands, separated, DNA polymerase can start assembling the new DNA strand, and that's at step three. So keep in mind that these are complementary base pairings. So for instance, if I had an adenine there, I would have a thymine here. And if I had a cytosine here, I would have a guanine there. Okay, and they will always pair up in that fashion. So on this top strand, it is the leading strand, DNA polymerase, which is moving in this direction, can assemble the new DNA complementary strand without interruption. It can just add new nucleotides until it reaches the end. However, on the bottom strand, called the lagging strand, we have a problem. It is moving in the opposite direction. And the reason that it is moving in the opposite direction is because the, or, the original strand is opposite of the top strand. So on the right we have five prime, on the left we have three prime. And we can only copy the new strand in a five prime to three prime direction. So this strand is being copied to the right. So it simply can't start way at the beginning which would be over here because we have the replication fork. So it creates something called Okazaki fragments and that is represented here. These are Okazaki fragments. And it will go through and create a bunch of Okazaki fragments on this lagging strand. After this DNA polymerase copies the lagging strand, a new enzyme called DNA ligase will come through and seal these pieces together to make a complete DNA molecule. And the last step is the restoration of the DNA double helix. It will form its usual structure and we would then have a brand new strand here and a brand new strand there. Now I've included a video animation of DNA replication. This video was not done by me. It is done by freesciencelectures.com and it has the copyright of its respectful owners. You can find it on YouTube as well. When DNA replicates, its strands are separated by the enzyme helicase. Single-stranded DNA binding proteins keep the strands from re-annealing. One DNA strand encodes the leading strand, which forms from its 5' prime to its 3' prime end, using DNA polymerase 3. No problem here, but the lagging strand presents problems. It has to form from 5' prime to 3' prime 2. It forms in pieces called Okazaki fragments. First, an RNA primase lays down an RNA primer. Then, DNA polymerase 3 lays down new DNA. The process repeats again and again. DNA polymerase 1 replaces the RNA primers 
with DNA. Finally, DNA ligase links the Okazaki fragment.